So something you mentioned uh, in your presentation, Amy, is that adults seem to think ministry to children is very important, but they don't place as high a value on adult formation. Do you have a sense of what that's about? Is it um, a lack of time for parents or a sense that they already know what they need to know? Because it occurs to me that parents uh, are the primary driving force for faith transmission to children. And if that's the case, we should be investing in the parents. So I'm curious to hear what you think about that, what you've seen in your research, and if there are any tools that might be meaningful to parents as they consider how to raise their kids in a faith tradition. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 a great point. So uh, in the research, one of the things that we found is, just as you mentioned, parents especially if they had children under the age of 18, placed a lot of importance on Bible study and more formal education for young people. And then if you look at how they felt about Bible study and the similar activities for older individuals for their own age group, uh, it was like one of the lowest things on the list uh, that they put down. Yeah. So then the question is, is, well, why is that? Why is this so valuable for young people or parents think it's so valuable for young people, but they themselves don't necessarily think it's valuable. And I think some of it has to do with a parents often seeing those activities as some sort of education. And it is, it is an education. But to keep that education going, what a lot of religious organizations have done is to give like ceremonies when it's quote unquote complete, a little bit like you graduate from kindergarten or you have a graduation ceremony out of, um, I don't know, eighth grade, or you have some other ceremonies at the end of maybe a sports year or something where you get together and everyone gets a little something and you have a party and you have, yep. you know, and some rituals of some sort. Now, the reason that religious organizations do that is in part because they want to keep, they want the kids to build to something. They want it to be a cool activity. They want it to feel like they're accomplishing something, that they're moving forward. But the downside to that is, I think for a lot of parents, they feel like, well, you did it. Like we got you through, you know, it's a little bit like high school. You don't need to go on to college. Or maybe when you graduate from college, you don't need to continue to take classes and you often don't continue to take classes. Uh, so I think parents just feel like, well, you know, it's our job to get you through, just like we got to get you through high school or we got to get you through college. But then when that is done, you're kind of on your own. And if you want to do more, you can do more. But there isn't always a lot of structure for you to do more. And um, you will come back to religion, often people wander a little bit after, you know, those, those events, whenever they, I know they're different for each religion or, but although sometimes similar age groups, and they'll come back again to the congregation when they have children and they need the congregation to do the same thing that they did for them initially, you know, so we'll get them when they, you know, on the other side, once they start having kids of their own. But of course, this then creates this blank space uh, between when these young people have graduated from these things before they come back again. Uh, and when they do come back, a lot of parents are like, well, you know, this, I already got my education. Why is this still valuable to me? Yeah. So I think there's a lot more congregations could do, and I'm, I'm not quite sure how to exactly do that, but to address that gap. Uh, yeah. And and also to, you know, incentivize adults to continue to be interested in education as they move forward, if if that's something that's important to, to congregations. And so maybe, maybe you need to have a lot more ceremonies and parties. <laughs> that's one option. Yeah. Um, or maybe there needs to be more of a sense of this continuing, uh, you know, trying to embed that in people that this isn't just like, a okay, you graduated, and we had the big party, because some of the parties are amazing, right? They're really neat, and kids get a lot of money. And uh, I don't know, it's, I, I know it's different for each uh, religious organ, you know, religion, but uh, there, there just seems to be that that seems to be like a natural ending that's consistent with other similar types of quote unquote graduations that we have. So yeah. how do you continue to instill, you know, lifelong learning with if you've gotten all the basics? Yeah. Uh, and that I think there's a lot of work that could be done around that. Yeah, that is so interesting. I mean, a few things occur to me. Um, we've often lamented in Christian church world that uh, confirmation is usually um 
mistaken to be a graduation, right? Uh, and it's usually done around that time of entering into high school and leaving leaving middle school. Um, and that's often when we see a, a mass exodus of our young people because they think, okay, I'm like graduated from Sunday school. And that is, that's actually the opposite of what happens in the rite of confirmation. You are confirming a faith and promising to be a, a learner for life in connection to a community. So it's, it's truly the opposite, but it often gets substituted. Um, so that that comes to mind as as uh, there could be a clarifying of of what these traditions actually mean and what these what these celebrations mean. But um, it also occurs to me a, a phrase that I like very much is um, in the scriptures, in the Christian tradition, we see Jesus welcoming the children and teaching the adults and we get it backwards. Um, we often will teach the children and welcome the adults uh, in a sense of hospitality. And um, Jesus was about having disciples, which means a learner. So lifelong learning, as you named, is so very important. But yeah, it's uh, it's just fascinating to me. Again, I think we're seeing parents really being really caring about this and being invested in this. But as you said, there's a there's an age where uh, folks are jettisoned, right? And there isn't a lot of um, expectation or understanding that, that this continual learning still matters. So that puts a, an interesting onus on the church leaders to think about how to how to sort of recapture that spirit. So yeah, thank you.